Key point of distinction number two. What is the attitude that physicists have, and you studying physics have, to equations? And the answer is, you just use them, right? You get given equations, you just use them, right? I would say, you use them as appropriate. I mean, you've got to work out what is the appropriate equation. I was having a look at your physics data and formula sheet um, the other day. And essentially, all you need to do when I say use them is you're going to have some values, and you will do one of two things, or sometimes both. You're going to substitute those values into the appropriate formula. That's the first thing. And then secondly, like, it has to be something that you could do from the end of year 10. Maybe a bit of rearrangement, right? Make the, change the subject to whatever it is that you are trying to solve. And that's the extent of it in year 11 and 12 physics. It has to be because we can't assume that you actually have taken uh, mathematics in years 11 and 12. So for instance, uh, what's that one? I think it's an S, right? S equals displacement yes. equals so that's, that's equal to UT plus half AT squared, squared right? Yeah. Now, why is that true? Where does it come from? If I'm a physicist, don't care, right? I can just use it. I can just use it. I don't need to know. I don't need any foundation for it. I can just go ahead, quote it, and use it as appropriate. But that rather doesn't cut it in mathematics, right? For every equation that you're going to use, you need to be able to get where that comes from from first principles. We have a name for that. We call it deriving, right? Uh, not to be confused with differentiation, right? I'm talking about getting something from, <coughs> excuse me, it's theoretical ba basis, right? So we would call that from first principles. Now, just so it turns out, this equation on the left-hand side for displacement, it's not hard to derive at all. Um, it just takes some fairly basic calculus that you already know. For example, we would say, by definition, what is velocity? It's a derivative, right? What's it, what's it comparing? What two things is it comparing? It's displacement and time, right? Change in displacement compared to, whoops, that's a very messy S, change in displacement compared to change in time, right? For, so from this, I could make a very minor rearrangement, and I can say, look, let's just consider these two variables separately, our displacement one and our time one, okay? Now, again, by definition, I can say, well, what's velocity? I can think about that from an initial condition plus whatever changes from acceleration based on how long you've changed that, right? So we, again, have this familiar equation in here. U, initial velocity, plus acceleration times however long that acceleration's been happening, time, right, with respect to t. Now, there's only one last piece of the puzzle here, which in physics we don't need to worry about, but in mathematics we do. How do I get from this statement which is about the changes in displacement and the changes in time to a concrete statement about the displacement and time themselves. And the answer is we integrate, right? Now in this specific spot, um, you would integrate not just with respect to displacement, but you'd say, well, let's integrate from some point to another. Do you remember us trying to work out a constant integration in this particular way? If I have a displacement initially of zero, begin at the origin, then I can say, oh, sorry, that's not meant to be in t, it's meant to be an s. I can say from naught to t, doing this integration, it is very straightforward to see from a calculus point of view where that half at squared comes from. It comes from us doing the power rule for integration, right? In mathematics, we care about that. In physics, you don't need to. You can just quote it, use as appropriate. Make sense? Okay, now I said motion is a big umbrella term, and the two parts of it that we really care about and we should distinguish between are called kinematics and mechanics, mechanics being the part that we're going to focus on. Okay? Uh, what does kinematics mean? Well, it actually has to do with the name, kinematics. Uh, we say, oh, I'm going to the cinema to watch a movie, right? Cinema is short for cinematograph, which just means moving picture. Moving picture, literally, right? So the cinema in kinematics just means movement. And it's a question of, if you've got a thing, how's it moving? Can you describe how it is moving for me, right? Now, from a physics point of view, and this is mentioned right at the top with experimentation, what do we do? Well, you just look at stuff, right? Oops, wrong color. You observe it. That's our fancy name for look at stuff. And then you take measurements. And if you do that reliably enough, you can get a sense of how something is moving. But in mathematics, observations, our empirical data, 
that's not actually what we go off, right? We want to go off of equations. So things like, say, displacement, help me out here, what's the next one? When you differentiate, you get velocity, you differentiate again, you get acceleration. All these things we can understand through, just look at the previous row, right? We can understand these from the point of view of their equations via calculus. We're going to differentiate and integrate to go back and forth. Do you see this? We don't have an accelerometer measuring acceleration. We have equations of acceleration, right? So we're not taking data points. We're using the equations and then going back and forth by calculus. OK, now we're finally getting to the point, right, at mechanics. Mechanics is more than just how does it move. It's asking a deeper question, which is why? Why, why is it doing that? What are the reasons for it? Why does it move like that? <laughs> I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Anyway, um, I, I, I have all this like second guessing now because I'm like, what movies have you even watched? Anyway, I, have to, I don't know anymore. Now, in physics, again, thanks to this guy, right? We basically take his three laws, and just like with the equations, we just say, do I need to know where they come from? No. Nope. Do I need to know why? No. Nope. We just take them and use them. Okay, and you can do a lot with that, right? Now, those three laws, I don't know about you, but I remember them this way. I remember them by their names, right? The first law is the one about inertia, right? That Taylor Swift loves to sing about. Haters going to hate, heartbreak is going to break, whatever it is, the rest of that song, right? Things are going to keep doing whatever it is that they are currently doing, whether that's staying still or in motion, right? That's the first law. Second law is the one that relates force and momentum, right? It has to do with the change, the rate of change of momentum being directly proportional and in the same direction as whatever force you're applying, right? And then lastly, third law. Action reaction. action reaction, right? You might call it the law of opposition, but action reaction is a pretty memorable way to do it. Now, once you've got these set up and you can assume them, you can send human beings to the moon with that stuff. This is powerful. But in mathematics, we actually want to dig into the why even further, right? So what we do is we create what we call a mathematical model. What do we use to go into our model? And the answer is, we model the direction and the magnitude, or the directions and magnitudes, I should say. Uh, by the way, what topic tells us about direction and magnitude? Vectors, right? So weirdly, vectors was not in um, the course for years and years and years, officially anyway. But we talked about direction and magnitude. We just never called them vectors, right? It's a bit like um, he who must not be named. So it's that kind of thing, right? We, though, we have the formal language of vectors. What are we modeling the vectors of? And the answer is, uh, going back to this idea of forces, but more specifically, I'm going to give you examples in a second, um, forces and the masses of the objects that we're having a look at. So one of the key differences that you'll see in mechanics questions in extension two as compared to any other motion you're looking at in advanced or extension one is, we'll tell you how much things weigh and then expect you to make calculations on the basis of that, right? So just real quick before we leave off, because I put like forces up here as a thing in quote marks that uh, physics is interested in, that math is not interested in. But now when I say forces down here, what am I referring to? Let's have a look at some of the easy ones, right? So for example, the most common one you're going to deal with is gravity, though I know we could have an argument about whether gravity is a force or not, so let's just put weight there as well, just for good measure. Yeah, I, I, won't, I won't get started into that argument too, too deep rabbit hole, right? Um, when you throw something and then you let go, right, what's that called? It starts with a P. That's called projection, right? When you project something off into the air, uh, that again introduces a force into something that makes it move. What about if you had something which wasn't just thrown, but it had the ability to push itself along as it went? What would you call that? It starts with a T. That's thrust, right? So if you, for example, had a rocket or a plane, it's not just pushed off and then off it goes. Actually, it continues pushing itself, right? Uh, often the reason why it needs to continue pushing itself is because something is trying to stop it, right? So we would call that things that are trying to stop your motion, resistance. And the two that you're probably going to be most frequently encountering are when you are rub against a surface, so we call that friction, um, or when you are hitting, you know, 
uh, particles of a gas that you're, or fluid that you're flying through, which we would call drag. Now, it's probably worth just mentioning, just to make you feel a little bit better, because your brain is like gradually getting like fuller and fuller at this point. Uh, I'm going to give you one thing that you no longer need to worry about now that you're in the new course, and it's something called torque. Does anyone know what torque is? Someone describe what torque is? Torque is, it's about rotational velocity or rotational acceleration. There used to be a subtopic within mechanics called uniform circular motion. And it was one of the things that didn't make the cut when we went from eight topics down to five. So this is, uh, yes, hooray. Okay, this is what we're having a look at.